Good morning, everyone. I just want to uh, let you know that uh, we're glad you're here this morning. Um, you know, Sunday morning is a sacred time where we can come together. Forget about all of the things that are going on uh, in life. And just focus on the things that are really important. Our relationship with God, our relationship with each other in the Church of Jesus Christ. And so we're glad you're here. Uh, we love you. We want you to know that um, all that we do, uh, first and foremost, is for the glory of the Lord Jesus. And second is for you, that you would be growing and becoming more like Christ in your own relationship with Him. Uh, this morning, um, we have a theme that's going to be running through our entire service, and it's the holiness of hope. And I want to begin by reading our scripture for you this, uh, this morning from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed that is coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And these two words are going to form, you mean, the anchors for our service this morning. First of all, hope. And then second of all, holiness. And we're going to see the relationship between the two as we move, you mean, down through our service today. To begin with, we have a video from a dear couple that have been at Berean for a long time. They are no longer able to be out physically because um, of some health problems. It's Stan and June Carroll. Uh, June will be speaking to you on the video. And I asked her to speak about the hope that she has in Christ and how she gets through. I mean, each day she struggles with a very debilitating disease, has struggled with for some time. She'll share this with you in the video. Uh, and, I mean, the truth is, is that June Carroll today is seven inches shorter than she was when she got married due to the deterioration of her body. And she's going to talk to you right now I mean, from her home about the hope that she has in Christ that her mind is fixed on. Um, what, what I'll do is I'll just go through, you know, go through the questions with you. Um, probably what we're going to do now, they probably won't hear my voice, but um, they'll just hear you answering the, answering okay. the questions. So... Um, can you, uh, you know, give us your name and how long you have known the Lord? June Carroll. I've known the Lord since the mid-60s. And that's how long I've known the Lord. Okay. Um, tell us about your uh, your physical problems and, uh, you know, what you've been you know, dealing with, uh, you know, and how long you've been dealing with those. Yeah. I have been dealing with rheumatoid arthritis for 42 years. And uh, it's been quite it's a classroom for me. I don't think I've graduated from it yet. So I'm still in the classroom of RA trying to deal with it on a daily basis. Okay. One that I love so much is uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, 13. Is that correct? Uh, I love that. And uh, I often think that, you know, I'm not here by accident. I'm here by divine providence, and God had a plan and a purpose for my life that sometimes has bewildered me and has caused a lot of uh, understanding in my own heart of what all of this is about. But in and through it all, God had a plan for me and to prosper me and to bless me that I might have that blessed hope in Christ the Lord. The hope that we have in Christ the Lord is just immeasurable. We just cannot count the ways that He has met my need. I tell you, the worst parts of the day for me are from 12 till dawn. Because it seems that's when the enemy comes in like a flood. And He disturbs my peace, my sleep, and my thought patterns as to what I think about. So, this is why I have to learn Scripture. Because when I just recite the scripture, the 23rd Psalm always helps greatly. The Lord's Prayer helps me greatly. And then I just ask, please God, will you just allow me to sleep for a couple of hours and to recoup a little bit? And you know, that has been my hope is in the Lord. He has never failed. Jesus never, ever fails. He has not.
just give your heart to the very heart that you have to the Lord because there is no other answer. Christ is the answer. Anything else will never do. It cannot remedy the soul sickness that you have until you receive Christ because there is power in that blood. When what, what sometimes really causes me to think of when he saved me, I didn't realize that he saved me from my past sins, my present sins, and my future ones, which I haven't yet committed. You know, that that's overwhelming in my mind and my thinking. How could we have a God so great to do that? That he forgives sin, and it was because of the blood of Jesus. There was precious blood that was shed for my sin and the sin of the whole world. And it paid the price that I could never, ever pay. I noticed you have a, a, a poem there. Would you be willing to uh, to read that again about uh, oh, the hope that you have in Christ? Oh, I would be delighted to read it. The deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of the pain, thanking God during the trials, trusting Him when we're tempted to lose hope, and loving Him when He seems so distant and far away. At my lowest, God is my hope. At my darkest, God is my light. At my weakest, God is my strength. At my saddest, God is my comfort. What more do I need? He covers it all. What wise wisdom, huh? For a woman that has spent plenty of time in a desert that God had prepared for her, yet prepared so many broom trees for her to hide under, so much comfort. As Psalm 42 reminds us, we are to ask ourselves, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for there I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. We're going to go to prayer now. We're going to ask the men to come forward for the offering. Uh, let's spend some time in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are reminded indeed that you are a gracious Heavenly Father. That we can have pure and true hope because of what you have done on the cross for us. That not only did you pay for our sins, but each and every day you provide the strength, the rock, the shield to hide behind. The wisdom when we call upon you indeed the pure and lasting hope that we have in eternal life. But as we've seen from our dear sister this morning in June, that there is hope for every day. There is hope in knowing that Jesus Christ himself is indwelling in you. There is hope in knowing that he has charged his angels over each one of us. There is hope in knowing that your forgiveness, the Father's forgiveness, is just a prayer away for even when we fall. There is everlasting hope. Father, we pray that as we are gathered together this morning, that our worship would lift your name, that the name of your Son would get glory, that we would exalt the name of Jesus Christ this morning. That in every aspect, from the giving of our tithes and offerings, to our time of study in the Word, to our response in worship and song, that everything else would be put aside and you and you alone be at the forefront. Our hope is indeed in you. We thank you for that sure and lasting hope. For it's in Jesus' name we pray with power. Amen. Please just sit and read the words to uh, the message of this song. Try to hold on to this world with everything I have, but I feel the weight of what it brings and the hurt that tries to grind. The many trials that seem to never end, His word declares this truth that we will enter in His rest with wonders and 
But I hold on to this soul And you promise that he brings That there will be a place with no more suffering There will be a day with no more tears No more pain No more fear There will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more, we'll see Jesus face to face. But until that day, we'll hold on to you always. The journey seems so long If you're walking on your own But there's never been a step When you walked out all alone The trouble's so long lose your heart Cause you're every easy grace And the beauty that's in store Always the hurt of life's day But I hold on to this soul Promise that he brings There will be a place With no more suffering There will be a day With no more tears No more pain No more fear There will be a day When the burdens down this place Will be no but until that day, we'll all see you our way. We stand together, we're going to uh, sing praises to the God who we're going to be spending eternity with.
Praise of my Savior. 
of who you are, we can trust you. We can put our hope in you. When you call us from the waters, we know we won't sink. If we keep our eyes on you, we will walk on the waters to you. It is impossible, but nothing is impossible for you. On our own strength, we would sink, we would fall, we would burn. But because of you, death can even drive us. You may allow us to, but even then, we get to spend forever in your presence. And that is the same. It's a beautiful thing. Amen. 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 This morning, we have something that's becoming a very regular routine here at the Invited Church, and that's a, another baby dedication. So Nick's going to come and up and down here and do some double duty. Nick and Steph are bringing uh, their little one, Savannah, to be dedicated to the Savannah Lane. And they come on up, Ella. You know, we're back for any other time. You know, last week I was in the back, and there was a, a, a woman in the back who, oh, please, not to walk, she hasn't been here for that long. And she said, is that all you do at Green Bible Church is uh, eat and drink, you know? Uh, and I noticed when she was saying that she had a donut in one hand and a coffee in the other. Uh, but, you know, as I think of this, I said, well, we like to eat, and apparently, apparently we like to make babies here at Green, uh, which I think is a good thing uh, for you young people, which you and I, you know, kind of stuff, you know. I don't have a chance to get, get go into this really that much this morning. But we're so thankful for all the babies uh, that God is sending away. But there's something that's way, way above any of those things. And that's worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ and praising Him and raising up. Oh, Savannah, I am. I'm so wonderful in her. She's smiling. I might have to hold you and kiss you before this is over. I really wasn't listening. Oh, we like to, we, we're here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And to bring up and raise up our children under the nurture and the admonition of the Lord Jesus. And uh, we just want to, I'm just going to go over this again, especially those who are new here and are visiting, is that baby dedications have no merit for Savannah. That, and, and I suppose the verse I could most easily come to is John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Most likely, as Savannah ages, that will be the first verse that you will read. Because it is crucial, it, it is the central point of all of the scriptures. Savannah can't get to heaven because she's been born into a Christian family, because she goes to church, uh, she could go through all of these ceremonies, and none of it means anything unless. When she gets to that age where she can recognize her need of a Savior, that she puts her faith and trust, trust in Jesus Christ alone. And so the dedication of the church here at the Green Bible Church is really a dedication uh, of Steph and Nick and the family and of the whole church to model Christ to her, to teach Christ to her, to pray for her. And so this is a dedication, and when we do this, I want all of you to take it, because this whole church, we have a responsibility, not only for the children in our own personal family, but in all of the family of, 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 of the room. Amen? And so, uh, to that end, we're going to pray and dedicate this family. We will dedicate 
uh, Savannah to the Lord and ask the Lord to use her and at the earliest possible age to bring her to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to a personal relationship. That's what she needs. With that in mind, I'm going to ask those in the friends and family who would like to come and stand alongside of Nick and Staff and Ella as they uh, are dedicating little Savannah to the Lord. If you want to come up and join us, if you're in the congregation, say, I want to go up, but I promise to pray not only for Savannah, but for the uh, children of this assembly regularly. Why don't you stand up with us alongside, uh, just stand up in the, in the auditorium, and we're going to pray and dedicate this young wife uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that he might use her, he might get saved, and he might use her for his glory and honor. Okay? All right, let's find out on a prayer of dedication. Our Heavenly Father, how we thank you for every precious child that you send our way. And we thank you for Nick and Seth and the entire family. We thank you for Savannah for sending uh, her to us and to this family and for her health and strength. And Father, we just pray that indeed at the earliest possible age, she might come to know Christ as her personal Savior. Father, we pray that you would strengthen her, not only physically, but spiritually as well. And to that end, we dedicate her. We dedicate our dear little child, Savannah, Lynn, Garland, in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Well, what a good little girl you were. Somebody's going to hoist the neck. Can you do two at a time? you got to pass her off. Pass off Ellis Gorman and get her up there. Hoist her to the skies. Yes, she is. Isn't she wonderful? God bless. Now, before you sit down this morning, take a chance to give somebody a hug. Let them know you're glad they're here this morning. Let them know God loves you very much. Tell them that.